before I do that, I actually want to tell you that this exercise takes around one and a half hours. So we'll need to be super efficient about that to finish in one hour only. So let's hope that this uh, works with one hour. And now, what's, what's Kanban? Let us have a very brief background about Kanban. Kanban is like a way of managing your flow of development, your flow of your process. You are processing something. You are delivering something. So you typically have an upstream input these are, if we visualize these as, as our customers, they are putting things on the backlog and prioritizing them. Whatever on top is the most priority things. These things are fed into the system of development, whatever it is, and then it produces something which is ready to be consumed to, by the end users. So the process is an end-to-end -end development process, starting with raw material and producing something which is variable something that we call concept to cash. There is nothing partially produced here. Everything is ready to be consumed, okay? So this is the upstream input. This is the downstream delivery. This is the throughput of the team, the number of items the team is producing per unit of time, okay. Any system whatsoever produces something in steps. Nothing is produced all at once in one step. So what we'll be doing is that we'll visualize our development as three steps. First, we design our work, then we develop the work, then we test the work, and then it's done. Okay? Pretty simple. Of course, in real life, development processes become more complicated than that. But this is for the sake of knowledge and, and learning. This is okay. Now, as you can see, Every single step has a doing part and a done part. So if I'm doing something, I'm done with it. So it's waiting here to be consumed by the next step. So if someone is designing a feature, he has finished designing, but the developers are busy taking any of these design, it will be waiting here, okay? So we can visualize these parts as wait time versus activity time. So activities which are or, or features or backlog items waiting on the done areas are just waiting nothing no activity which is value adding taking place here also the backlog wait time is also a wait time it's a waste so the customer requested a feature and it waited here for maybe three weeks so this is also wait time research says that Wait time amounts for about 80% of the process duration, typically in all businesses. This is from Gartner, one of the famous uh, research uh, uh, organizations about business. So what, what we can think about is that, you know what, if wait time is taking about 80% of the process time, what if we concentrate on reducing wait time? Just do the activity as is. Nothing changed in the way of doing work. If we just managed to reduce the wait time, we'll improve dramatically. 90% reduction in activity wait time amounts for 72% reduction in activity total time. So the overall process efficiency rises up. Agree? Okay, now in order to do that, one of the techniques that people use in, in, in lean software development and in development in general is to limit the amount of work in process. So imagine that we are producing something, something like this, and we, ha we, are, we, are, taking into we are not taking into consideration a bottleneck which happens here. This bottleneck piles up here in the done column a lot of partially done activities, partially done work. So probably things are not integrated, okay? At the end of the day, how much waste are we producing? We are producing a lot of partially done work here while actually there is no cash at the end, okay? What we are trying to do right now is to study our system 
and put these kinds of limitations or constraints onto the development activity. So what we can do is that, okay, design will put three items only here. Development will put around five items. We have more developers in our team, so we can consume things faster. And testing, oh, okay, uh, we only have one tester and he can produce uh, things maybe in a slightly uh, slower manner. So uh, working process equal two is enough. This means that you cannot have more than two items in this column. Okay, got the idea? That is very simple. Just put constraints on the flow, on the amount of items that you have in the process. Now, what you have in front of you right now is a simulation game for learning how Kanban works. So, you have these uh, uh, feature cards, and these feature cards are estimated in design, development, and testing. So every one of those, uh, the yellow ones, I mean, every one of those has a certain amount of time in design, then development and testing, say hours, okay? Now, also, uh, you will find that these three activities map directly to the Kanban board that you have. You have the first two columns design, the second two columns is development, and the third column is testing, and that's it, then deploy it, okay? You'll also find, oh, sorry, this part here, days deployed minus days selected equal lead time and how much subscribers did it gain us. Or, uh, uh, that, that thing. What happens is that every feature is picked up out of the backlog someday. We are working in a daily manner, so you will count the number of days that we are in right now, and just you write that the day uh, uh, deployed or the day picked up is maybe uh, day number 10, okay? After nine days, we have deployed it. So you will write that the days deployed is 19. So the cycle time will be 19 minus 10, which is nine days. Pretty simple, okay? What you will do is that you have three teams. The first team has two dice, the second team has three dice, and the third team is two dice. We are simulating a development team, every team member represented by a dice. I'm very sorry for that, but it's just a simulation game. So what you'll be doing is that you'll assign a number of developers to every feature. So you can assign one developer, you can assign two developers, you can assign the whole team to work on a single feature. Then throw the dice, give you three. What you'll do is that you'll scratch three of the remaining hours. And you can do this with the rest of the team so that you can play the game, okay? There are only two constraints in this game. The first constraint is that you cannot put more the, than the WIP limits. The second constraint is that if you assign a designer to work on development, you can do that. But what you'll be doing is that he'll not be that efficient. So if the dice tells you that he scores six, you'll only scratch on three. Is this, does, does this make sense? If you assign a developer to do testing, Okay, you can do that, but you'll not be that efficient. So you will cut half the score that you got in the uh, die. Okay, last thing to explain things here. You have guys to organize yourselves into several roles. The first role and the most important role is the project manager. He owns these two things, the daily steps and the event cards. Okay, so he tells everyone what's to do. He is, control, he is uh, facilitating this, this exercise. The steps are exactly outlined here. And at the beginning of every iteration, he picks the event card and reads what's beneath it. Do not pick any card which, whose time is not yet there, okay? 
You will also have the control chart, the community flow chart, and the financial summary. Every feature of those gives you some kind of a benefit. This benefit is outlined in the number of subscribers that would subscribe for my application if this feature is implemented. So this is kind of a return on investment. For this specific feature, uh, uh, story 16, it will result in six subscribers. This would be mm, mm, slightly like this one. This results in seven subscribers and so on, okay? Once these are deployed, you can gain $100 per subscriber. So if you have deployed three user stories, you just count the number of subscribers you have gained and multiply this with $100 and place it here. Everything is outlined at the, oh, okay, yeah. There are a lot, a plenty of instructions here. I'll leave you to read those, okay? I'll be here again helping you to do this, but now, please, after you assign the project manager, you'll assign a financial manager, and you'll assign any of your team members to, you, to do the cumulative work uh, diagram and the control diagram. Anyone can do this. Okay, the rest of the team can participate in the development activity. Okay, the development activity is just throwing dice. Sorry, what was <laughs> number this is, this is just numbering, uh, uh, serial numbering. numbering of the stories. Okay. Let's go. Ah, guys, you have three types of other activities here. This white one is a special activity which will generate $5,000 on its own, but there is something regarding it you'll discover. These are features, if not done at specific time, you will get fined. These purple ones. And these are technical issues in your code. These technical issues have to be done either way, but you will find out how to do this. So these are special types of activities. Let's start, assign your work, and I'll be available. I will have uh, Arabic or English, all of you? English, I, I English. okay. prefer for the rest. Yep. I'm lost. <laughs> it's a lot of instructions. Okay, That's a lot of instructions. <laughs> yeah, the starting is very simple. Okay. Just throw the dice. What are the dice? These are like already spread out features. We'll These are testing points or testing effort, which is... Okay. No, okay. Sorry, I just want to understand the philosophy behind those vague ready. What means one, two? What does it mean? Any okay. These are not ready. Okay. Okay. Once they enter this column, they are ready. Okay. So now they are before ready. So once this is here, you should... and. After several days, it will be here. So we will Probably point the in the other front. Yeah, exactly. You, 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 then you, you'll calculate the cycle time at this time okay. by uh, subtracting so the, the, uh, date, not the day. The day. We are talking days. Day one, day. Get something done, something not done. So th this one is with nine, right? Yeah. Okay, and two from here. Okay, and it will remain over here. Have you started with this part? Yes. Don't you think that if we started with the testing part would be better? Just to simulate a pull process, not a push process? If they put anything here, put you cannot. You cannot. Oh, actually you can. The ready, is six. You, can, you can pull up till six items in the ready. So you can, you can select something here, of course. Okay, on second day or like No, 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 no. Fine. You have always to make sure as a manager, mm. Okay. No, no, not from here, from here. No, that's no. Testing. Uh, this right. is testing. Testing. Oh. Yeah, here. All right. testing. No, you're right. No. Testing. It's, it's okay. Ah, okay. Uh, this is not working. Take this. <laughs> oh. As you can see, in the industrial age, we have developed things in specializations. So we have concentrated on our processes to identify the process roles and try to being very efficient vertically. That is, I'm 
I'm very, uh, I'm an efficient tester doing testing. I'm an efficient developer doing development. I'm an efficient designer doing designing and that's it. In Kanban, we do not think this way. In Kanban, we are optimizing the throughput rather than optimizing the, the specialization, the utilization of individuals. You can have a system where all individuals are fully utilized, but the system is producing nothing or producing something which is very little. Now, I'm giving way for people to be underutilized. They are sitting still, they are doing nothing, okay? For the benefit of maximizing the, the throughput of the whole system. From concept to cash, the system will only be useful if it achieves some cash for me, okay? Taking this into consideration, we'll have in some cases like, what's your name? Like Nasser told me, we'll have some people which are underutilized. You have developed, you have testers are fully engaged while developers cannot add anything else because they cannot, simply they cannot. In this case, you have brought into surface a problem that you have never thought of that you're either the quality is bad or the tester to developer balance is not balanced or something else. And this is all what about Agile. Agile does not solve problems, it brings problems to the surface. So this case is very good. You have surfaced your problems and it's now the opportunity to solve them, okay? All options are open. You can think of reshoveling developers and doing testing work, hiring more testers, introduce some unit testing, enable the product to be more of more quality and things like that. You got the idea? Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.